Let's dive inside the score of Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake from circa 1875. We're going to kind of try and get inside of his head and understand what a composer does when they, when they orchestrate. Usually composers sit around at pianos and they come up with themes and basic little blocks of harmony, simple chords, and then they spend a lot of time imagining each instrument in an orchestra bringing their piano idea to life. Some of the ideas in question in today's little breakdown is uh, this theme. And also this theme. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to start on that second theme, which I think of as like a B idea to the first theme as an A idea. We'll start, um, his orchestration begins very softly with uh, oboe playing the main theme, and then he takes a very delicate string, let's call it a pad, uh, how he's thinking is taking, taking the oboe and having the oboe just soar over the top with this melody. And underneath, he just has something very simple in the strings. And that's it. So when you put the two together, you get this. And that's, uh, I added some jazz harmony accidentally there. We're going to keep going. Um, I'm going to play, I'm going to record in some of these parts here. Uh, here's a little diagram, courtesy of Spitfire Audio, of areas on a stage where instruments live. Uh, so we imagine this little thin line that you could probably barely see as being the edge of the stage where the instrument uh, that I have selected to play for us, this is where the conductor would stand so they can have views of all of the instruments surrounding them. All of these musicians are in turn facing the conductor. Um, I'll probably pull this up for each instrument as I'm playing it in. But uh, front and center, well, maybe a couple rows back, but center to the conductor is this instrument, the oboe, that has the melody. So let me play in the melody for us. I'm going to get rid of this so I can see what I'm doing. Here we go. I'm going to stop, stop it there. Um, we're going to experience quite a build when the oboe switched from having the melody to those more sustained notes. Um, I'm going to multitask here, and I'm going to fix a little oopsies that I made along the way. Where was that little jazz grace note? I think around here. Right there. No, no jazz in the classical orchestra. Okay, uh, that, that is eliminated. Now, what was I saying? I could not multitask. Uh, where the melody kind of ceases to stop that more moving angular line and we flip over into those more sustained 
tones. The, the oboe has, has lost the melody at that point. And the next instrument that will take over the melody at that point is going to be an army of horns, French horns. Let's see, where would they be sitting in an orchestral setting? The horns, in according to Spitfire, they live over on the far left back side of the orchestra. Here's, here's a French horn for us. I think I had a wrong note in there. But um, I'm going to record that now. The... In the score, Tchaikovsky calls for four horns to play at once, and Spitfire has recorded four horns. So that's, that's perfect for us. Let's, let's uh, record them at their big impact here. Uh, let's see. One. one wrong note in there that because of technology I can knock out and fix real quick. Uh, oops. And don't have to go back and re-record that. Okay, so um, our, we get melody B followed by melody A in this particular section. Um, if you were listening to an actual recording of it, not this deconstruction of it, you would be presented with the theme that w the horns just played from the oboe first, and then the oboe gets to play theme number two, or the B theme, before passing off the melodic material over to the horns. Um, now that we have our melodies in place, now we're going to fill in some accompaniment. And we talked... I mentioned earlier that we're going to try and get inside of Tchaikovsky's brain. So let me back up and go over to the piano for a second here. Piano is still running. That's good. Uh, as these themes play, uh, we could probably think inside the composer's head that he went, wow, that melody would sound good with an oboe. What should play the harmony? So here's maybe what the composer is thinking. I don't need to record this, I just need to play it. Something, maybe something like that. And um, it says it, he thinks from the piano uh, that the oboe would be a good start and the horn should take over for the loud part, the big impact, but the delicate, sweet thing is going to be this oboe. Um, so what's, what's going to play that harmony that I just kind of played on, on the piano? He, he designates this to strings. They have a very large dynamic volume range that they can play. And he, he certainly utilizes that to his advantage. Um, here's the strings. He, he designates to do this very soft, um, sustained note, but with, with movement in it. Uh, it's not quite a vibrato. We call it a tremolo. And... Uh, I want to show you where the strings are in, in this particular setting. The green colors in the little map. Uh, on the left, we have violin number one. Usually play the higher harmonies designated out of any violin divisi or split parts. 
uh, violin two, slightly closer to center here, but still on the left sides, we create kind of the stereo effect in real life with high sounds coming from the left. So lots of violins all on the left side. Then moving over to the mid-range, stringed instruments, viola, uh, slightly to the right. Further front right is the celli. And then finally to the back side is the, are the basses. Uh, so we have high going to low in real life experience of stereo. So this uh, idea of what kind of sound that we have coming from the strings, I have the violin ones queued up here that would play higher harmonies. Normally when we think of a sustained sound, we have that, but uh, Tchaikovsky wants a little more motion underneath his melody. So he's designated that all of the violin ones and twos and also the violas are going to play this technique called tremolo, which sounds like this. He's furiously uh, using the bow on, on the strings. So let me play us some of the violin parts underneath of the oboe melody. Here we go. Uh, are we ready to record it? Because I don't want to do it twice. Here we go. Two. It would help, first off, if I played the right note. Let's, let's do it again. <laughs> stop there. Okay, um, first of all, the volumes, I have not played with the actual volumes of what we want things to be. The, the strings are coming in real hot, so we're going we're gonna to bring them down a bit here. And now I'm going to go back and add in, he's, he's designated the violin ones, play all those notes. He's got some harmony, but the same sort of phrase structure in violin two. Here comes violin two for you. I hit the button. Just kidding. Wrong track. Violin two. Already, that sounds very, very full, but um, especially as, as we're getting to this big climactic moment. But wait, there's more. We got more instruments in the mix here. The violas are utilizing the same technique and new notes, so we have this little pad. I think of it like basic harmony on a piano where you play like a three note chord all at the same time. This is Probably what he was thinking was he wanted a kind of mid-range chord, chordal idea coming from uh, the upper strings here. So let's, let's record a little viola. I get to read viola clef. That's never fun.
must play the right notes. But I'm uh, not going to go back and record that a second time because we have technology to help us. Let's just continue onwards from here. What's What note is next? Let's get it right. Whoopsies. Page turns are the worst. Well, let's let's get it. That's starting to sound like something. I think I made a mistake somewhere in one of these parts when we get to the big, where's the big moment? Right here. It'd be nice if some of these guys carried over just a little bit more and didn't take a, a mental breather in there and kept that sustained sound happening. See, this is... This is something. All right, let's get rid of those oopsies. Now, now we're on to something. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull down the string volume just a little bit. They're, they're overpowering my oboe. And now, let's move on to the celli. You remember them. Now, you'll see if you're following along underneath the picture of me that I have uh, two different channels here of Shelly because I need them to do uh, both multiple techniques. The one technique that I need from us is um, the the tremolo idea. Go Shelly, yeah. Um, but also a plucked technique where the cellos are going to multiple cellos. Shelly are going to pluck their strings with their hand instead of playing with the bow, and it sounds like this. Yeah. So, um, this, this combination creates a little more contrast, and um, maybe Tchaikovsky began to sing the, the melodies and create that sustained harmony um, in his right hand while he was playing the piano, and then in his left hand, he added this contrasting idea. So let me let me kind of demonstrate what I'm thinking that he does. He sings. And um, there's kind of like this moving note in uh, short, a staccato short note in my left hand while my right hand just sustains chords. You know. So um, the low end of the orchestra is going to need to take that over, says Tchaikovsky. Anyway, oops, wrong sound effect. There we go. Let us play in some cello parts. Now here, the big exciting part, the, uh, the cellies are going to have a little bit of time to physically pick up their bows and switch from the plucking to the tremolo technique. And I'm going to have them join us in a second here with the tremolo technique. <laughs> Thank you. 
And they got this nice little line in there. That was fun to play. Yeah, I like that. That was that was much fun for, for me. More interesting than just having to sit there and sustain stuff. When when you're an inner inner voice like a um, an alto or a tenor, your your harmony parts can can get rather dry and it's not as fun to sing or play because um, you don't have what feels like an important part. So if you get a little counter melody hidden in your part, it, uh, it makes you feel important, but it also takes the music to a new level. Okay, uh, he, he essentially doubles um, the first half of what we hear from the cello in the basses before the basses go rogue and um, you should never let the basses go rogue. Only terrible things will happen after that. No, I'm just kidding. I love, I love bass players. Um, okay, so they begin with the pizzicato bass. Here we go. Uh, and then we're going to switch over to not tremolo in a bit, but just regular old what we call arco or just straight up dragging the string, the bow across the strings. That was probably not the best descriptor of it, but let's go. hanging on that cliffhanger. Now we get proper basses. Oh, this is this is getting very exciting for me. I hope it is for you too. Okay, uh, we're moving on up. Where are we going next? How about um, oh, the last puzzle piece that is present in the B theme that we kick off our little example with is one that creates just a little bit more movement in our accompaniment. You heard me in the beginning of this video kind of arpeggiating some basic chords that are present here. Tchaikovsky likely did that, but um, the way that he did it may have been more like what is present in this last puzzle piece, which is the harp. little triplets in there against the beats. Um, let us, where is my harp? I just passed it. Here it is. Here's my harp. Lovely. Let me play, let me play some harp for us. I had a couple little mistakes in the harp part. Uh, would it be better to do a take two or just clean them up? Let's see. Um, could you let's let's just isolate the harp because it's getting a little thick. Let's isolate the harp because it's getting a little thick. Here we go, uh, and I'll find my mistakes along the way. There's one. There's another one. Whoopsies. 
Um, this is not one that we want either. Let's see if I... Oh, right, right there. We don't. I hit some extra notes with my my fingers. Uh, we need to end on that note. Get rid of that one. And we need to move this here. That will sound more correct. Ah, that sounds like a harp now, doesn't it? Okay. So. Uh, now with correct notes, why don't we listen to what's all there? Nah, we'll we'll come back and give you the big grandiose tour a little bit later. I'm gonna pull down the volumes on my strings, which are all still too loud and overpowering all my colors. Let me see what this is. That's much better. I have a couple performance uh, issues with my strings that are making me angry. So I'm going to try and quickly clean as many of them as I can and move us on to this big impact that happens when the horns take over and we go back to theme number one. So the horns are in, the strings are taken care of. I recorded them as we were dealing with the string parts earlier. We have uh, the rest of the orchestra joins us now. And why don't we start with the woodwinds and work our way down to the, the part that you'll be waiting the most for. We're going to go to flutes first, and we're going to review where do the flutes sit. What? Where do the flutes sit? Do, 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 do. Uh, next to the oboes, the flutes sit slightly left of center in the probably third or fourth row, depending on how many violins we have seated in that green area. They're in the blue row. All the woodwinds are in this blue row. So we're going to have uh, flutes add in some higher harmony. They kind of, um, they do in fact double violin one, but with sustained sound. So here's our, our flute. but the volume's supposed to be up to 11. That'll do. So we have uh, flutes and we have oboes and where are, no piccolo in this particular section, but if there was one, it would be next to the flutes. We have clarinets joining us and then bassoons are coming. Uh, so we're gonna start with the flutes. And we're at the point of impact, and we're ready to record a short little flute line. Now, uh, the little bits of gaps of space that I played in the violin parts I shouldn't have played because violins don't have to worry about breathing. I have a background as a wind player, as a trumpet player, and um, breathing is essential for me to be able to play the instrument, but violins, they could just saw on that note all day long if they wanted to. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that I kind of cover up those violin breaths that I accidentally took in my own playing subconsciously because they're bugging me. All right, moving on. Clarinets. Oh, do you want to hear the flutes? You probably want to hear what we did with the flutes. Maybe with the oboes. Pretty and spooky. Okay, uh, clarinets are on deck. Mm. 
There's our clarinets. They're going to just join this mix of sustained but loud notes for them. I played the wrong notes. What's wrong with me? Oh, goodness. Okay. Let's, let's do that one more time. Oh, must be getting a little tired playing some, some wrong notes here. Uh, we'll leave space for them to breathe, and we will continue onward. Oop. Here we go. Uh, two. And more technical difficulties. We're almost there. Uh, we need to five. Okay. Man, I keep uh, slipping. It's a hot, sweaty day here, and I am in a in a blazer to look like Professor Jake. All right. Uh, just a quick little taste of our woodwinds. Quick little taste of woodwind so far. They no longer have the melody like we uh, suspected that they may. Like the, the point of orchestration is pass around the, the themes, keep them interesting. All right, bassoons. What does a bassoon sound like? For those that don't know, we make sure that we're set. Remember, this is where they sit. So if you are listening in headphones or through stereo speakers that have um, stereo settings set, you will hear, hopefully, all of these instruments set in these particular positions. So like out of your right ear, if your headphones are on right, you should be hearing bassoon coming out your right ear. Okay, that's a bassoon, by the way. And what do our lovely, lovely bassoons get to play? Uh, uh, down a whole step, up a whole step. That can't be right. Oh, you know what? Bassoon is reading in tenor clef. That's why. So tenor clef is written up a whole step, and I read down. I read down. Okay. Uh, F sharp. That's the bassoon part. Oh, mistakes. Should have practiced this before. I thought I could do it in real time. I am a hack, Professor Jake. Uh, let's see. Bum, bum, and then, oh, that's the problem. Let's fix it. Come on, man. You can do this. So much closer. All right. Uh. Uh. Just clean half note and oopsies on the trigger figure finger. finger. 
there, and then this will bug me. We need this. G and B. Now, ha ha, ha ha ha, we have a Swan Lake Woodwinds section. Here they are. Mm, I lied. There is one wrong note in this part. <laughs> Fixed. Okay. Fun fact, if we added in the horns at this point, you would have a woodwind quintet, but multiplied by many players. Woodwind quintet contains one brass instrument. The don't call it a French horn, horn. So much fun. Okay. Uh, now, the, uh, the bad boys in, and bad girls in the orchestra, the brass section. We have uh, trumpets and trombones scattered throughout the far back right side of this particular orchestra. Let me make sure that you can see that. Uh, trumpets are closest to center, and then the lowest sounds, tuba, are f closest to the front of the stage. In between sit two types of trombones, a tenor trombone and a bass trombone. Tchaikovsky has written for all of these. So we will begin with trumpets. Where are, th oh, did he not write for trumpets in this passage? I thought he did. I read it wrong. He wrote for regular trombones and then bass trombones and tubas. So while we're on the topic of trum trumpets, there they are. But we don't need them. Many trumpet players just got real sad. All right, uh, what are we doing? Some trombones these are the tenor trombones in the mid mid to high well let's call it mid range for them they have some just big old colorful extra emphasis here here come the trombones <laughs> Not a very exciting trombone part, but um, here's here they are by themselves. By themselves. Five times. Bass trombones are on deck. What's a bass trombone? A bigger, louder, fatter trombone. Filling out the cores, Tchaikovsky is. Here come the trom uh, bass trombones. Good old quarter notes. And of course, the tuba. Not the lowest range of the tuba written here. Here it comes. Awesome. And then finally, we get some timpani. Now, problem child with this particular timpani. 
is that I don't have a function to do a tremolo for a timpani, so I'm going to have to manually do kind of a drum roll with my hands for ooh, however long this particular passage is. Wish me luck. What a workout. Uh, hopefully you could hear all that by itself. Probably probably not the greatest timpani roll isolated, but here's here's what it was. Not bad. Couple couple little oopsies. But I think when we put it all together, you're going to get the point. Oh, by the way, where are the timpani usually? Uh, the back of the bus here. We have timpani in this particular orchestral setting. Uh, front and center. Well, I used that wrong. Back and center from the conductor and from the audience. They are holding everything together straight ahead there. Um, so timpani. And this... When, so we had all this come from piano and get transferred into this big, lush orchestral setting. I'm going to play with a couple volumes very quickly here, and hopefully this will do exactly what we want it to do. We're going to listen to all of this hard work that we just did. Uh, took however long we've been recording for now, to play this in in real time. But imagine yourself in 1875 not having a computer to play back these sounds automatically for you. You have to have quite the imagination to sit there and think about what each instrument is going to do and what they sound like and who should get the melody and what their supporting port part should be. Uh, how loud or soft should they be in the context of everything? Um, you know, all, all from a piano and a piece of paper. No, no computers to, to help. And even with computers, it, it's um, a lot of important decision making to make. And, uh, well, the, the results can be beautiful, it can also be terrible. Here's um, back, back to theme number two. We're going to have the strings, harp, oboe, and then the big climactic moment here in our little two themes come together to theme A with the whole rest of the orchestra comes in. That'll do, I think, enough for a demonstration, and that'll do, hopefully, enough for a little bit of a demonstration into Tchaikovsky's brain for today. I will uh, explore some other composers for us in future videos. Hopefully, this was insightful and you learned something from it. Look for more.